long hauler syndrome, or as it's now being called, long COVID or post COVID, it doesn't even have an official name yet because it's so new. But doctors mm. are starting to see this with COVID survivors. These are people who actually got sick and got better, but then they're actually having a scary constellation of symptoms months after they've gotten infected. And it can be super mild and annoying, or it could be completely disabling. And the symptoms can shift and change. Um, uh, this is a picture of lungs before and after COVID. And not everybody has this, but some people we believe actually are carrying this kind of damage on the right-hand side around. Now, Chris Cuomo shared his acute bout with COVID, but then he started to have post-COVID syndrome, as well as the uh, actress Alyssa Milano, who's been talking about some of her symptoms, including hair loss. Mm. What's the good news? Is there any and are you making any progress with the research that you're doing and developing and, and sharing with your colleagues? Yeah, well, here's what we know so far. This is a real condition. We don't know yet who's going to get it, but it's much more common than we thought. And you can get these symptoms, and this is important, whether you had a mild case of COVID or severe case of COVID. And interestingly, you know, we talked about fever in the early part of this pandemic. Only 7% of people who have this long haul said they even had a fever in the first place. So this is why we have wow. to all be careful. Now, there are three things that we're learning that seem to be problematic. Blood vessels are involved, and that's what I study. Inflammation, which we already know is not good for our bodies, really bad now, and our nervous system. And one of the biggest areas of concern is the heart. And we're beginning to see symptoms like racing heart or palpitations. And in fact, we have an image um, uh, of, uh, of the heart um, having palpitations. And you can kind of see the heart normally beats, you know, when it beats a little bit faster when you're actually running or exercising. But it should beat on a regular basis. And when a heart like rears up and goes fast, it can be a real problem. Now, there's a study in, from Germany that showed that up to 70% of people who recover from COVID can actually have changes in their heart. And we don't know if it's reversible or permanent. And it's consistent with what we're finding out in autopsy, where you know I think we have some pictures of um, a research that I've done on the left is a normal heart with beautiful blood vessels uh, like pencils feeding giving our delivering blood to our heart. And on the right-hand side is what um, happens with COVID. Now, we don't know if this happens to everyone. These are the most seriously affected people, but it wakes us all up to basically say that we have to actually be careful. We're also seeing brain fog, which is another major disabling symptom, yes, which is so many the nervous people. system. Yes. Young people can be affected too. So we really, really need to actually um, uh, make sure we don't get this disease and if we get it, how to actually combat it and overcome it which we have given everyone, uh, Dr. Wells, great advice on quality of masks and uh, grading them for us and reminding everyone over and over again as we all hear it every day. Everyone is becoming fatigued with it, but that is the only way you can stop this, right, is the hand washing, social distancing, wearing of masks, uh, only uh, gathering at a safe distance, preferably outdoors. And you said uh, to our family, you know, why don't you try and hold that to about 30 minutes? And we've tried to follow all of your great advice and keep looking to you for it. In the research you've done in your lifetime, it's, it's so vast and just complex, but you break it down and make it so simple. From what you know from the work you've done on disease in general, do you feel that there's, uh, there's a grain of hope there in, in, in that we will be able to help people rebuild their systems and heal yeah. from the inside out? Long term. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is really what we have today is the power of medical research and science on our side. And if you've actually gone through COVID and you're having symptoms and you're watching the show, then what you need to do is to advocate for yourself. Now, listen, COVID's already been kind of a DYI experience from the very get-go, but there is support out there. And what's really amazing is there's nonprofits with resources. There's one group called Survivor Corps, founded by patients that are mobilizing themselves for the answers. And you can also look for medical clinics that are now starting to specialize in post-COVID recovery. And look, Rach, we've been all wear worn out very wary, stressed out all by this whole experience that we didn't, none of us expected. But we have to right. remember one positive thing. We are our own best caretakers of our health. Number one priority, don't get COVID in the first place. So we have to keep wearing a mask and washing our hands and social distancing, as we said. And don't forget, the principles never change. Get good sleep, stay active, and eat great food. And that's something that I think you know you and I both enjoy, and you've been communicating to your audience. We can eat to beat disease.